The Boring Man, Chapter 2, The Unforeseen My name is Amana, and I am not afraid, she screamed into the void of her own mind, attempting to steel herself against the natural instinct of fear. Around her, her friends moved with quiet precision, delicately removing the leaves that concealed the nest of the Ahmed, a formidable predator known for its fierce territorial instincts. Despite its reputation, Amana couldn't help but marvel at the creature's dual nature. A beast of prey during its reproductive phase, yet a gentle herbivore outside of it. The necessity of their mission weighed heavily on her shoulders. Their family's herd required the vitality that only fresh Akhmet blood could provide. As she watched, her thoughts wandered to the peculiarities of the Akhmet's biology. The creature, which only hunted to nourish its young, would produce increasingly smaller offspring in captivity, eventually leading to sterility. The irony of such a powerful creature being so vulnerable in the face of domestication was not lost on her. The Akhmet they targeted now was a prime specimen, a large male that would significantly bolster their herd's strength. Hey, Amana, we have three eggs over here. Tiamina's voice broke through her contemplation. Watching her friends replace the eggs with replicas filled Amana with a blend of admiration and trepidation. The decoy eggs were a clever ruse, designed to buy them time by fooling the Akhmet into laying anew after the originals failed to hatch. Yet, as they prepared to leave, an unsettling discovery halted their steps. Tiamina, ever the observant one, spotted something extraordinary through the trees, a gigantic silver sphere, incongruous against the natural landscape. Its surface shimmered momentarily with ripples before it vanished from sight, though its presence still lingered, a hidden menace among the foliage. Amana's instincts screamed at her to retreat, but Tiamina's curiosity and a hint of bravery from the group propelled them forward. Yet their advance was cut short by the enraged call of the Akhmet, its cry a harrowing reminder of their intrusion. The realization that their subterfuge had failed sent a chill down Amana's spine. The Akhmet, having discovered the tampering with its nest, was now a maelstrom of fury and paternal instinct. As the beast burst through the underbrush, its massive teeth bared and eyes alight with vengeance, Amana understood the gravity of their mistake. Their weapons, though carried as a precaution, felt woefully inadequate against such primal rage. Her people were not warriors. They were scholars, artists, and caretakers, unaccustomed to violence and conflict. In that moment of despair, Amana made a decision that would forever alter the course of her life. May the spirits of the past guide me into the afterlife, she whispered, a silent prayer for courage. Ignoring every instinct that screamed for her to flee, she charged towards the Akhmet, hoping to draw its attention and give her friends a chance to escape. Her diversion was enough to momentarily distract the beast, but the paralysis of fear had taken hold of her companions. Instead of using their weapons to defend themselves, they flailed helplessly, attempting to ward off the creature with futile gestures, causing only minor damage. In the blink of an eye, Amana's world collapsed into a nightmare. The Akhmet's attack was swift and merciless, leaving her friends lifeless on the forest floor, their blood painting the leaves a vivid shade of orange. Standing alone amidst the carnage, Amana's heart shattered. So this is it? At least we'll walk the path together, she thought, resigned to her fate, yet imbued with a tragic sense of valor. She had faced her fear head-on, a final act of defiance in a world that demanded far too much from those merely striving to survive. Amana's heart pounded against her chest, each beat a countdown to her imminent demise but fate had a different plan. Out of nowhere, a figure surged forward, a man, unlike any she had witnessed before. His form was robust and compact, moving with an agility that defied explanation. Before she could process his intent, a fearsome cry tore from his lips, 
echoing the Achmet's own. With astonishing speed, he seized a rock, large and daunting, and launched it at the beast. The rock found its mark, sending the creature into retreat. Amana stood in awe, her fear momentarily forgotten in the wake of such an unexpected rescue. However, the stranger's victory was short-lived. He collapsed, a heap on the ground, prompting Amana to rush to his side. Is he... she whispered, her voice trailing off as she knelt beside him. The sight of red blood trickling from his nose sent a shiver down her spine. Red blood was rare, often linked to tales of violence and destruction among the stars. Despite her reservations, Amana couldn't leave him. She reached for her communicator with trembling hands. Amana calling Akhmet Farm. We need help. We've been attacked by a feral Akhmet, and there are casualties. Hurry, please. Her brother's voice crackled through the device. Are you okay, Amana? We're on our way. Relief washed over her, yet as she glanced at the alien's still form, she added, and bring a heavy platform. We have four to carry back. Four, but... Her brother started, confusion evident in his tone. Just bring it, Amana insisted, cutting him off. When her siblings arrived, their eyes widened at the sight of the alien. Amana had wiped the blood from his nose, hoping to alleviate their fears. She recounted the tale, her words painting a picture of a battle against impossible odds. He looks like a soldier, her sister remarked, observing the stranger's unique attire. Must be some kind of augmentation armor, one brother mused. Allows him to throw rocks like they're pebbles. And you said sci-fi was all nonsense, he teased, nudging the other. The decision was made to place the alien in a storage room, a space they could secure and monitor. We can't just leave him out here. And we don't know... If he's dangerous, Amana reasoned, her voice laden with uncertainty. A mattress was laid on the floor, and a surveillance device, typically used for watching over the livestock, was installed. This way, we can keep an eye on him, see if he wakes up. Another brother explained as he adjusted the device's angle. Their actions were dictated by necessity. The alien's biology was unknown, and seeking outside help would only raise questions they weren't prepared to answer, especially given the illicit nature of their hunt. As the room was locked behind them, Amana's mind raced with what the future might hold. This stranger had saved her life, yet in doing so, had entwined his fate with hers in ways she couldn't yet understand. The farm settled into a wary silence, each member of the family contemplating the implications of their new, unexpected guest. Under the silent gaze of the surveillance device, the alien remained motionless, a puzzle they were all hesitant to solve. Yet, within this uncertainty, there was a glimmer of hope. Amana stared intently at the surveillance feed on her intracube, her gaze fixed on the alien man. The sight of a skeleton beside him caught her off guard. What in the name of the resting dead is that? she murmured, confusion and irritation swirling within her. She remembered instructing her younger brother to provide the man with food, not a grim display of ancient bones. She confronted her brother, seeking an explanation for his bizarre choice. I thought it'd scare him straight if he's one of those warrior monster aliens from the movies. A clear message, he defended with a shrug. Amana couldn't deny the logic, albeit grim behind his actions. The bones were remnants of a slaver pirate, a threat their family had neutralized centuries ago, now serving as a stark warning. As they spoke, the alien stirred, his movements catching Amana's attention. He consumed the fruit left for him, a sign that he wasn't inherently predatory. His next action, using the skull to reach the window, showcased his creativity and determination though the attempt ended with him tumbling to the floor. Amana couldn't help but let out a mix of scream and laughter at the sight. Poor thing, she thought, her heart softening towards him. 
Watching him persist, Amana noted his strength and curiosity. He had not tried to escape, a sign that perhaps he bore them no ill will. Remembering his act of saving her, she decided to act on a hunch. Despite her brother's protests, she seized his video cube, determined to offer the stranger some form of entertainment or connection to their world. Before opening the door to the storage room, Amana paused, her heart racing. Am I truly this brave? She questioned herself, echoing the courage she had mustered in the forest. With a quick motion, she threw the device at the stranger's feet and hastily retreated, locking the door behind her only partially, a gesture of the trust she was beginning to feel. Returning to her surveillance, Amana watched as the alien quickly became engrossed with the video cube. His familiarity with the device suggested an intelligence and adaptability that intrigued her. Why am I afraid, she pondered, reassured by his peaceful demeanor. He could have harmed us, yet he chose to save me. Her father's sudden entrance startled her, but his presence was a comfort. She quickly briefed him on the events, and to her surprise, he proposed a visit to Carl, an exolinguist friend in the city, confident that the stranger meant no harm. Emboldened by her father's assessment, Amana couldn't contain her excitement at the prospect of introducing the alien to a broader world. She burst into the storage room's hallway, declaring their plans for tomorrow from behind the partially locked door, her words spilling out in a hopeful stream. You probably have no idea what I'm saying, but tomorrow we'll go to the city of Sinaya and Carl will know how to deal with you. Maybe we'll even find a way to thank you. Her smile was genuine, her fear replaced with a budding sense of empathy. Leaving the door almost unlocked, she retreated to her room, her thoughts a whirlwind of anticipation for the day ahead. As she drifted off to sleep, the stranger was no longer just an alien. He was a friend, a fascinating mystery she was eager to unravel. One last word echoed in her mind before the night took her. Tomorrow. Tomorrow.